What up, everybody? Welcome to another exciting season of fantasy football. Glad we're finally getting underway. Uh, can't believe it's already August, but hey, that's good news because that means football uh, is right around the corner. So, uh, yeah, before we get to, to the main event, uh, the keeper reveal, let's first chat about a couple league administrative issues. First off being the most important one, welcome Andrew Negri to the league. Uh, Andrew will be taking over Ben's team, uh, and it's sad to see poor Ben go, but uh, it's deserved, as as you all know. Uh, last year, he was not the greatest participant, and this year, uh, his keepers were late even after many, many reminders. So I think it's for the best. Uh, excited to have Andrew Negri in the league. He'll be an awesome addition, so glad to have you. And also, he will be at the draft on August 19th, which is awesome. So we'll have 9 out of 10 people there drafting in person. Kudos to Greg for driving up from Asheville. So, uh, you know, that's a dedication right there. So thanks for doing that. Um, but yeah, the only person we'll be missing at the draft is Stephen Cole. So bad karma to his team. Uh, his team should be cursed for this year as a result. So, uh, yeah, Cole will be drafting... Uh, by phone, at least he won't be auto-drafting. Uh, he'll still make his own picks and follow along. But, um, yeah, so again, the draft is August 19th, 8 p.m., and we'll still be at Lake Monticello, but different address this time, 10 Landslide Court. I'll post all this on the, on the message board. Um, and we'll figure out a few things in the meantime, uh, you know, how we, how we want to work food and drink, um... But, uh, yeah, it's going to be a great time. Get there early so we can all hang out. Um, before the draft, there'll be, you know, ping pong going, cornhole, the lake if you want to dip your toe in the water. Uh, so it'll be a great time. And then, of course, the draft that will start around 8 p.m.-ish. So, um, yeah, looking forward to it. For the draft, we have three things we'll also chat about uh, we have to figure out the divisions. We'll just draw teams to figure out the divisions for AFC and NFC. Remember, that'll switch each year to keep it fresh. Um, and then we'll also vote on keeper rules just to see if we are going to change the free agent rule. Because as we're about to see, about a third of our keepers are free agents because uh, they have very favorable rules. And then uh, also how we want to handle the year-to-year rules for the keeper, how many rounds they should go up each year. So we'll figure it out. Democracy will prevail. Uh, but yeah, looking forward to, to August 19th for sure. All right, so let's get to it. The keepers will go in order from first to worst. Um, and it's not a very scientific ranking method. So please, uh, you know, no one, no one get too upset. Uh, basically, you'll see for each team, the player they're keeping, the keeper round that, that they have, and then where they are projected to go in a 10-team uh, PPR two-quarterback league. Uh, so, oh, and then also if there's any trades for draft picks, so that'll be in there as well in the calculation for overall ranking. All right, let's, let's get to it. So, the number one team for keepers. So I guess it's a bit controversial to rank yourself number one. I'm probably jinxing my whole season with this. But uh, looking at that setup, I had to do it. Le'Veon Bell in the 11th round, Jordan Howard in the 16th round. Both running backs, which is a great position to keep. Uh, both young studs who should pay off huge uh, for this year. It is a bit concerning. Le'Veon Bell's never been to a training camp in his whole life. Uh, I'd love to see one season him get in there and get some work in the summer. But uh, hasn't hurt yet. So with those two guys and then also uh, Cole's first round pick from our Odell Beckham trade last year and Greg's second round pick from our Julio Jones trade last year, it's basically the perfect storm for 2017. Basically, if I don't win it this year, I'll, I'll never win it, I guess. But uh, yeah, looking at that setup, I had to do it. Put myself at number one with those very savvy moves. I am the 
the smartest man alive! Coming in at number two, we got John Fornecker, and his two keepers are David Johnson in the 16th round and Melvin Gordon in the 7th round. So... He followed uh, pretty much that same formula. He kept two young stud running backs. Really, the only thing separating John and I uh, at the top was that I have the extra draft picks. But, uh, man, these are two quality keepers. Melvin Gordon in the seventh round is some great value. He was having a phenomenal year last year until he got injured. And then, of course, David Johnson, his boy, uh, in the 16th round. And he is quite possibly the number one overall player in all of fantasy football. So, yeah, rightfully so. John always talks about how much he loves David Johnson and he's all his dreams come true and how he wants him on his fantasy team forever and ever. And we work in a business of tough competitors. I love you. You? Coming in at number three, we got Stephen Cole and his two keepers of Odell Beckham Jr. in the 16th round and Alshon Jeffrey in the 14th round. So we got two stud wide receivers going off the board, especially Odell Beckham in the 16th round. That's some great value. And then Alshon Jeffrey, we'll see. I mean, he is a perennial lottery ticket. He seems to get injured every other game, but when he plays, he's fantastic. And He's going to be playing for the number one offense in the NFL this year, so I like his chance at racking up some big points. Uh, and Alshon gets the biggest upgrade ever from Jay Cutler to Carson Wentz. So, uh, yeah, he could have a big year. We'll see. But the reason why Cole is not quite in that upper echelon of, of keepers is that he lost his first round pick for this year, trading to get Odell Beckham. So that's going to hurt him this year. He's not going to uh, pick for a little while in the draft uh, on August 19th. But uh, again, he does have two good keepers. Interestingly enough, he did pick up a ninth round pick and an 11th round pick with some uh, furious trading the past couple weeks. You know, so many of us had good players that we didn't keep where we were thinking, oh, should we keep this guy? I don't know. For Cole, he had to just notify the entire league that, oh my goodness, Ty Montgomery is available. You can't just let Ty Montgomery not be kept. So Cole just had to email us how he, his coach thinks he's an amazing guy and he's a really good running back and Ty Montgomery is just going to be the greatest deal ever. There's nothing you can't do with Mighty Putty. Call now and we'll send you two powerful sticks of Mighty Putty for only $19.99. But through this exclusive TV offer, we'll double it and send you two more sticks free. Mighty Putty will pay for itself the very first time. And even after he convinced John Fitzsimmons to take Ty Montgomery and they made a deal for him, he still then contacts everybody in the league and tried to get even more for Montgomery. But I'm not done yet. Call right now and I'll triple the offer and send you six sticks of Mighty Putty for the same low price of $19.99. And even after the Montgomery trade, then Cole dealt away Dak Prescott to Griff. So, uh, Cole sweet talking and swindling, I guess, paid off. He got a couple extra picks this past week. Uh, so I guess it all worked out. But, uh, hey, maybe these other teams benefited too because after all, Cole promised you that you're going to get uh, some awesome players and that you're going to win this year with Ty Montgomery and Dak Prescott. I guarantee it. Next up at number four, we got Drew Melson with his two keepers of Jordy Nelson in the eighth round and Devonta Freeman in the ninth round. So uh, there were actually a couple other teams who had a greater keeper round to real round differential, but... You know, the fact that both Drew's keepers are, are second round projected players, that carries a lot of weight going into the season, having having two top of the line players. And uh, one at running back, one at wide receiver, so a little variety there. It helps to diversify. And uh, yeah, so Drew is looking good going into to this season, following up his playoff run with a solid start to this season. At number five, we got John Fitzsimmons and his two keepers, the aforementioned Ty Montgomery in the 16th round and Stefan Diggs in the 15th round. So this is what I was saying. Uh, Fitz has a bigger 
uh, round differential than Drew. You can see Montgomery from 16th to 5th and Diggs from 15th to 9th. He's getting maybe a little more round-to-round -round value there than, than Drew at number 4. But he doesn't have two studs that he can you know, look to to carry his team. Uh, regardless of what Cole said, uh, Ty Montgomery is not going to be getting you 25 points a game. And Stefan Diggs, same thing. He plays on the Viking offense, which uh, that's that's a risky proposition right there. He's Diggs is good, but uh, I'm not totally sure where the points are coming from in Minnesota. So two solid players. Uh, Fitz might be the uh, perfect case of why we need to <laughs> change our free agent rules because these two players are guys who a couple years ago nobody wanted and now they're pretty good so when they got picked up they're just hanging in the 15th and 16th round forever so we might have to look into that but Fitz you know he's grandfathered in he got these two players Montgomery and Diggs coming in at number five at number six we got Stephen Griffith and Michael Crabtree as an eighth round pick and Dak Prescott uh, another trade trade target there uh, in the 12th round. So two saw keepers here. Again, a little variety. I like it. He's got a quarterback and a wide receiver. Um, and yeah, two very good players, even though I hate admitting it with Dak Prescott. So, uh, you know, Griff is well set up. These four, five, and six teams that we just went through of Drew, Fitz, and uh, Griff, they're very close very bunched, all solid keepers and solid value and varied positions. So these teams, it was really splitting hairs. Uh, and yeah, Griff is looking good as well at number six. Coming in at number seven, trying to rifle through these keepers. Uh, I know I know my videos can go a little long, so we're trying to keep up the pace. Uh, coming in at number seven, we got Pat Jordan with his two keepers of Antonio Brown in the seventh round, a very good keeper. And Kyle Rudolph, our first curveball of the Keeper Reveal video. But uh, hint, there's more curveballs to come, seeing as we're at the bottom of the barrel right now. But uh, yeah, Pat, you know, with his two choices, hey, Antonio Brown, that's that's a great keeper. But uh, Antonio Brown, story of Pat's, Pat's life, he, he's all he's got. And uh, Pat, Pat's had Antonio Brown for years now. And uh, he, Antonio Brown keeps getting... 30 points a game for him, and Pat somehow finishes last every year. So, is this the year the curse is finally broken, though? Uh, my instinct says no with this Kyle Rudolph keeper selection. Uh, nothing against Kyle Rudolph, uh, but more something against tight ends, because uh, what do tight ends get you? Like 60 yards and maybe a touchdown. Uh, tight ends are a little goofy for a keeper selection when the rest of us are trying to get, you know, stud quarterbacks and running backs. Uh, but hey, who knows, maybe a very savvy move by Pat and just the move Brown to the crown needs uh, to, to, to turn it around. Uh, but with Kyle Rudolph, uh, you know, again, Minnesota Vikings offense is a little iffy already. Um, but hey, maybe during the draft when the rest of us are fighting over Travis Kelsey and uh, Tyler Efert, and that might be all the tight ends I have off the top of my head right now. Uh, Pat's going to be sitting pretty and thinking to himself, thank God I got tight end covered already. So, hey, Pat coming in at number seven. At number eight, we got the new addition to the league, Andrew Negri, with his two keepers of Devontae Adams in the 16th round and Todd Gurley in the fourth round. So, uh, yeah, Negs didn't have control over his roster. You know, he wasn't able to manipulate that, but at least he gets to pick his keepers. And... Of course, Adams, some great value there. You know, no matter what, of course, 16th round worth a keeper selection uh, with Adams. And of course, the Packers score a million points a week. But uh, Todd Gurley, kind of the opposite situation because the Rams don't score any points uh, each week. So, you know, Todd Gurley, great running back, super talented. But I did not realize this till I looked it up, averaged an atrocious 3.2 yards a carry last year. So he's going to have to turn it around. And, and that's probably more on the offense rather than him. Because when you watch that St. Louis Rams offense, it is hilariously bad.
The good news for Gurley is if the Rams do score a touchdown, it's probably going to be him. So, hey, Negs with a pretty solid start to his team, and he'll be able to make his squad his own come draft day. Coming in at number nine, we have the champ. Mike Melson with his two keepers of Matt Ryan in the 12th round, a very solid keeper there, and Ezekiel Elliott in the first round. We have our first first round keeper of the night. And uh, yeah, interesting choice there. He'll lose his first round pick, but as we said, he's the champ. So it'll be the 10th overall pick. Um, so hey, maybe, maybe the champ knows what he's doing. But very interesting, more because there were so many other good keepers on this roster. You got Lamar Miller offered great value. You had Derek Carr, who offered great value. The one that I was sure it was going to be, Michael Thomas. Amazing value. All young guys, all solid. And you're talking a late round keeper selection for an early round talent. But hey, he went with Zeke, which interesting choice, of course, as an Eagles fan, forcing yourself to keep that cowboy. That that feels weird to me. But uh, also, Zeke's run into some legal troubles, and we'll see if uh, Roger Goodell brings down the hammer. So risky selection there as well. But uh, hey, Zeke is young. He's fantastic. He's very talented. And so he's going to probably keep getting better year after year. And from all indications, they're saying that he's training super hard in the offseason. He's working on his hurdles. He's working on his spin moves and juke moves. And he's working on his overall endurance. So we'll see if the champ can repeat. His keepers, talent-wise, are very similar to everybody else's, but he's losing that first round pick, of course. So we'll see how it works out. Mike Melson, number nine. And finally, at number 10, there's not much suspense because there's only one team left, but here you go, the number 10 team. Because you had a bad day, you take it one down, you sing a sad song just to turn it around, you say you don't go, you tell me don't lie, you work at a smile and you go for a ride, you had a bad day, you can't or don't lie, you come back down and you really don't mind, you had a bad day, you had a bad day. At number 10, Greg Bernardi with two of the more baffling keeper choices you ever will see. Uh, with Julio Jones in the first round and Alex Smith in the ninth round, if you look at the projected to keeper round value, Greg is sitting at negative two. He got negative value out of his keepers, which is just mind-boggling. How does that happen? Uh, so looking at his roster, there are no real studs for keepers, granted. But there's still some players who I thought were kind of intriguing. You got Isaiah Crowell, who would have been a 13th round keeper. Um, and he's a 4th round-ish projection. Tyreek Hill is a 16th round keeper. Jamison Crowder is a 16th round keeper. All these guys, they would have been at least okay value if he had kept him. But uh, Julio Jones, Greg has the 4th overall pick. So he would have picked a Julio-like player anyway, if not Julio himself, at number four. So not keeping much value there. But then Alex Smith. That is the one that uh, we all need to raz Greg repeatedly on draft day. Maybe we need to find some sort of eBay Alex Smith jersey for Greg to wear on draft day. Just a, a crazy choice, <laughs> seeing as Alex Smith is like the number 20-something at quarterback. And he's a ninth round keeper for Greg. And when he texted me that his second keeper was Smith, my reply was, Smith who? Who are we talking about here? Uh, surely it can't be Alex Smith. And so part of me thought maybe I had missed something. And so I had to go searching on the internet to see where where is Smith ranked. All right, so let's go ahead and get to the bottom of this. Here we are. We're on ESPN's Giraffe Kit page. Let's go ahead and check out the top 200 PPR rankings. I know it's not a, a two-quarterback system ranking, but hey, 
Top 200 PPR. We'll find we'll find Alex Smith. So let's go ahead and click on that. Go ahead and type Alex Smith into the search bar. And oh no, he's not found. Oh, so oh boy, Alex Smith isn't in the top 200 players PPR. That's okay. That's okay. I'm sure you know he's probably younger than I thought. He's got some potential. You know he's on the upswing. Maybe Alex Smith is going to break out in his oh god 13th season. Oh, mistakes have been made, Greg. So who knows? Uh, maybe at age 33, Alex Smith will break through uh, and shock the world and somehow turn into Aaron Rodgers. But more likely than not, you're going to get the 180 yards, one touchdown, and zero picks that Alex Smith is all about. He's that game manager. So uh, yeah, a, a tough start to the season for Greg. He's, uh, he's behind a little bit, but uh, he can make it up with some savvy draft picks in two weeks. So, Greg bringing up the rear at number 10. All right, everybody, that does it for the Keeper video. Hope you enjoyed it. And, uh, yeah, I guess uh, in the meantime, before draft day, we'll be posting on the message boards, A, hopefully some, some trash talk, some good trash talk, but also B, figuring out some details of food and drink and when everyone's showing up to the draft and all that. So, We'll figure out all that logistical stuff, too. But, yeah, looking forward to the draft in just two weeks. Can't wait. Looking forward to a great season, fellas.